in 1955, a young man who hopped on a bicycle came down to Disneyland and applied for a job. Though he was to fulfill many roles here at Disneyland, he later became a great Hollywood star. He came back here to uh, take you through the first 50 magical years of Disneyland. Speaking of magic, here's Tinkerbell to start our show. What is that? Okay, keep your eye on it. Wait, what are these? Blow on it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Disneyland's 50th anniversary celebration. For this truly historic event, no ordinary host would do. No, the Disney folks wanted someone who's been here from the beginning. They wanted a household name. I'm a, a name that means family entertainment. That's me. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. Donald, Donald, That's calm me. down. You're just too animated. Huh? I'm referring, of course, to me, Steve Martin. Hey, I was more sweet. Oh, really? Well, I don't remember him calling that show the Donald Duck Club. Huh? Now just waddle along. As I was saying, the Disney folks came to me because I began my career right here at the Magic Shop at Disneyland. That's me, Disneyland class of 1960. Magician, prestidigitator, and seller of fake vomit. <clears throat> so young Steve Martin starts performing magic here, and lo and behold, they start calling the place the Magic Kingdom. Coincidence? I don't think so. But right now, I'd like to introduce you to the man who started it all, Walt Disney. Walt, tell us how it all began. Well, it came about when my daughters were very young, and I, Saturday was always uh, Daddy's Day with the two daughters. Mm -hmm. So we'd start out and try to go someplace with, you know, different things, and I would take them to the merry-ground, and I took them different places, and as I'd sit there while they, uh, they rode the merry-ground, did all these things, sit on a bench, you know, eating peanuts. Right. I felt that there should be something built, some kind of a, an amusement enterprise built where the, the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. Great idea. So that's how Disneyland started. I'll take it from here, Walt. Thanks. This priceless artwork shows the first design for Disneyland, a small park that would have been near the Disney Studios in Burbank. It's sweet, isn't it? But he couldn't stop there. Not Walt. He wanted a world of the future, an exotic jungle, a wilderness frontier, and... Don't worry, Donald. This is just the most rare and valuable piece of art in the Disney archives. It's the painting that sold the concept of Disneyland to the bankers. <laughs> was. Was a painting. <laughs> Then Walt heard about an orange grove in Anaheim for sale. An hour away from any major city at the end of a dirt road. Talk about impossible dreams. If I could take you back in time. Wait a minute. What am I saying? I'm a magician. Here is the actual orange grove one year from opening. And that's actually Walt Disney in the actual orange grove. Let's listen in on his top secret plans. One, two, three, four. Aha! Some sort of code. I get it. Walt also had a code for all the trees on the property. Red ribbons for the big trees he wanted to save for Disneyland, and green ribbons for the ones he wanted removed. But, as fate would have it, the bulldozer driver was colorblind! Oops. So, Disneyland, less than a year from opening. No one in their wildest imagination could ever build an entire theme park here in just one year. Yeah, I'll show ya. Watch this, magic boy. I want to see. Keep going, boys. Faster, faster. That's it, Kim Rock. That's it, Kim Rock. Walt, come to this happy place 
welcome. Walt's dream had finally come true. And to celebrate, ABC organized the biggest live telecast in history. Some of the most famous stars in Hollywood showed up, including host Art Linklater. Frank Sinatra. Hello, Franco. Who's driving? Sammy Davis, Jr. Hello, Sammy. Bob Cummings, Ronnie Reagan. Come on in. Davy Crockett. Buddy Epstein's there, too. But right now, it's my pleasure to introduce the famous star whom Mr. Disney has asked to christen the Mark Twain. Ladies and gentlemen... Hello, Jack! Mr. Disney. Now, take it from here, Mr. Linklater. Your dad took my microphone. Huh? Hey, what's the big idea? I'm translating. Nobody can understand what you're saying. You can't, too. Cannot. Can't. Not. I'll show you. Ignore the duck. As I was saying, the lands that America saw on the Disneyland television show became real. I'll show you what's going on. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Now, I'll show you what's going on. Oh, really? I wouldn't say perfect. It was a hundred degrees in the shade, and the freshly poured asphalt was still wet. 11,000 people were invited, but 28,000 showed up. Meanwhile, the magic of live TV, a little less than magical. Signifying man's achievements. I thought I got a signal. There's been something gone wrong here for just an instant. He's looking for a microphone. He looks all confused. <laughs> Newspapers predicted the worst for Walt and his park, but only 90 days later, the one millionth guest walked through the gate. Disneyland not only survived, it thrived. Walt wanted the magic of Disneyland to begin as soon as you walk through the gates. And your first stop is this turn-of-the-century street inspired by the small town where Walt grew up. He felt so at home here. He even had an apartment built for himself above the fire department, and it's still there today. Walt paid tribute to his father in one of the shop windows. In others, you'll find some of Disneyland's most important contributors. Nice try, Donald. <laughs> Many shops have come and gone here over the last 50 years. Gone is the working pharmacy, and gone but not forgotten, my favorite, Hollywood Maxwell's Corset Shop, better known as the Wizard of Bras. Hmm. Yes, Disneyland is filled with nostalgia and memories, but that's only part of the magic. Let's not forget fantasy. Ah, hear that? When you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. For Walt, that was the very essence of Fantasyland. Of all the lands, this was closest to Walt's heart. He even placed the Disney family crest right above the castle gate. Fantasyland was created by the same artist who created Disney's animated films at the studio. And soon those storybook tales came to life in an orange grove in Anaheim. For the first time, we could step into those worlds and become a part of the adventure. Every attraction tells a story. The beginning, a middle, and an end. And sometimes a story has a surprise ending. I feel bad. In Adventureland and New Orleans Square, surprises happen all the time. In fact, Disneyland is the only place I can think of where you can be attacked by pirates, frightened by ghosts, and nearly crushed by a giant boulder, while keeping your arms, legs, and feet inside the vehicle at all times. And here's the adventure that started them all. Remote rivers through a treacherous jungle. Could something go horribly wrong? Only a punchline. Over the years, the Jungle Cruise has become a showcase for handsome and witty river guides. Oh no! That big elephant is coming up to us and it looks like he's going to squirt us! Everyone in the back, get down! 
Don't worry, it never happened. <laughs> it was the duck, right? The duck? You know, every time I get all dressed up in my cowboy hat and pearl-handled pistols, I think about the heroes of Frontier. You see, Walt believed it was important to pay tribute to the pioneers who blazed a trail across frontier America. And I agree. Especially when it involved saloon girls and blazing six guns! In Frontierland, you could meet popular Disney heroes of the day, like Davy Crockett and Zorro. For a while, there was an authentic American Indian village. And in the little mining town called Rainbow Ridge, you could board a mine train or pack mule to explore nature's wonderland. And then the West got a whole lot wilder. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was a thrilling addition to Disneyland's growing mountain range. The first peak was the Matterhorn, one of Disneyland's first e-ticket attractions. But the most out of this world mountain of them all is right here in Tomorrowland. When Disneyland first opened, Tomorrowland gave us a preview of the amazing, futuristic world of... 1986. Okay, so the 1980s didn't turn out that way. But Tomorrowland is really about imagining the possibilities of the future. So we got to go to the moon before real astronauts did. Hello, welcome to the moon. As you can see, it isn't easy to work in these spacesuits. But this faceplate, is all there is between me and an absolute vacuum. We got to travel through the mighty microscope on atom mobiles, beyond the realm of normal magnification. Oculoscope scanning, signal modulation positive. Can this be the threshold of inner space? We even traveled through liquid space on submarines. And no, you're not hallucinating. There were real live mermaids in the submarine lagoon for a while. But the only problem was, real live young men kept trying to swim out to them. Tomorrowland has always been a showcase for new ideas and new inventions, including one of Walt's most famous. Ah, audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. And this technology wasn't just for the birds. Walt's idea got better and, as always, bigger. Boys are ready! With my new wash day marvel, it takes only five hours. Not only could these robotic performers talk and act, they could jam. Hit it, boys! <laughs> Yes, Disneyland has had thousands of great entertainers over the years, and not all of them have had servos and circuit boards. I learned a lot about comedy by watching Wally Bo, star of over 47,000 shows at the Golden Horseshoe Review. And that is why there's gold in here. And he was only one of the great homegrown acts that brought their unique magic to Disneyland over the years. Of course, the headliners weren't bad either. For a lot of us, Disneyland's best magic trick happens every day at dusk, when all the lights come on and the Magic Kingdom is transformed before our very eyes. You know, that's one of the great things about Disneyland. Everyone has their own special memories. For some, it's the first time they walk through these gates. For others, it's their first parade. And I'm sure for all of you, it's watching me, Steve Martin, host Disneyland's big 50th anniversary. But while shows and attractions are all great, I think for most people, the real magic of Disneyland 
is right here. It's you, Donald. Yes, it's you and Mickey and all the rest of the gang who always make us feel like old friends. Oh. <laughs> Shall we? Let's do it! Goodbye, everybody. You know, I have to admit, you would have made a perfect toast, Donald. Thanks, Steve. Next to me. <laughs> To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world.